Good to go, Logan. All right, cool. So this is called Bitcoin Mining at Home. I'm Nick. I don't work in Bitcoin mining. I'm a software engineer, but I dabble in Bitcoin mining at home. So you can see we've got a miner right here. This is actually an ASIC miner. It's by a company called Ant Miner. It's an S9. Um, so this device right here, you can just plug in. We've got it plugged into a normal outlet right here. You don't need a fancy outlet. You don't need a dryer outlet or any of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, today I'm going to show you pretty much from scratch how to set this up, um, how to connect to a mining pool, um, and then how you actually get your payout in Bitcoin. Um, so this is, I've actually done this presentation before at the Bitcoin Commons, uh, this site down the road. Um, but this is kind of the setup. Like you can see, I've got this weird little contraption here, but I'll, I'll go over what this is later, but it's just kind of at home stuff. Um, and if you, if you've never been to like a big, that's, that should be riot mine, not mint. That's wrong. Mine. Fix it. All right. There we go. We're not minting. We're not shit coiners. We don't mint tokens here. So, okay. Yeah. So if you've never been to Rockdale, it's probably, what is it? 30 minutes north east of here. This is a really cool tour. They do a lot and they've got a lot of different facilities. You know, some of them, they actually have S9s running. They've got like this heated room that's really cool to go into. And they've got some of their newer buildings that have immersion mining. So they're actually using like mineral oil to cool it. Uh, but today we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about more what's on the left here. Just uh, mining, you know, solo mining at home, you know, drinking a Lone Star, you know, just using using your energy you've got on off the grid. Or, you know, I I've, I've actually have, I'm renting a house right now out in Mainer. And I get, I get like dirt cheap electricity. It's like three or four cent a kilowatt hour because I'm kind of by, I basically run along the power lines that go to the Tesla Gigafactory. So you can get dirt cheap energy out there. Plus the place I'm renting has uh, solar panels on the roof. So I'm producing like 300 or 3000 watts of energy if it's sunny out. So that's plenty of energy to basically mine for free when the sun is out. I can basically get free KYC Bitcoin. So, so it can be profitable in Texas for sure. Um, so the first question you ask is probably like, where do I buy one of these things? How much does it cost? Um, and we just checked a second ago. I think some of the cheap miners, the used S9 miners are going for 125 bucks. So you can get them for pretty dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, we recommend Kaboom Racks here is a good website. It's just kind of like a marketplace you can go to. It's, it's, I think it's Telegram based, but yeah, you can just get a miner there. I think that's how we picked up a couple miners for Pleb Lab, Lab is through Kaboom Racks. But yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to get nowadays. Um, so let's do a demo. Um, so the first thing you want to do is join a pool, right? So when you're mining at home, if you don't join a pool, you're probably just going to mine forever and never get a payout. So you essentially have to join a pool now. Um, and I probably my favorite pool is one called Brains. Uh, mainly Brains pool is my favorite because they actually have a custom firmware on this S9 called Brains OS. And with that OS, you can actually control how much power output you want. So right now, this isn't producing a lot of noise. It's because we tuned it down to only put out 800 watts of energy. Um, so that's pretty much, there's three hash boards on here. I believe each of them produces like 800 watts of energy. So if you have it all running, it's 2400 watts, which is the limit of plugging into just a normal plug. Um, but that produces more heat and more noise. So if you have like a family and you're mining in, in your house, you might want to clock it down to like 800 watts just so you don't annoy people with the, the noise. But yeah, this is running at 800 watts right now. And it's, you know, we're, we're talking right here and you can hear each other. So not producing too much heat either. So you can, you can really tune these things down to your use case and really how much energy you want to pay into it. I get 300 or three cents a kilowatt hour and solar. So I'm probably going to crank it up all the way at home. What is it? 2,400 Watts. I don't know. Where, where's Jim at? Where's our electrical engineer? It's more than that. Yeah. Who, who, who's our electrical engineer guy? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, you can run an S9 or at full speed in, in a normal plug, right? That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Yeah, yeah. That's what I was getting 
Yeah, and you could always plug into your, you know, your dryer outlet too. If if you want to run, you know, if you buy like an S19 or one of the more powerful ones, you have to plug into a, a 240. You know, so so yeah, just just be careful. Just uh, if you blow a fuse, just tune it down. <laughs> So yeah, the first thing we're going to do here before I actually set up the local device is I'm going to join a pool and set up my account. Um, so like, like I said, I recommend uh, just Brains, Brains Pool is my favorite. It's just super easy to get started with. Um, so you can actually sign up at pool.brains.com. And I've already signed up here. Um, but really, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, create a new wallet. And this is where you put your Bitcoin address that you actually want to get paid out in. Um, so let's go to funds wallet new, uh, whoops, wrong one. Uh, so let's go funds. You get an overview, then you say add new account. Um, so this is where you would name your account. I've already got one. So I'm just going to go to this test account thing here. Uh, it doesn't know when I'm going to get paid next. That's sad. <laughs> but anyways, the first thing you're going to want to do is add a wallet and a payout rule. Um, so you can add a wallet here. I've already got one called test wallet one. So if you look at this rule, like what does this mean? Um, so this right here, this BC one, this is a address that I created from my wallet. Um, you can use pretty much any wallet to create an address. I, my favorite wallet is Sparrow wallet. Um, it's just a desktop wallet on your machine. Uh, but yeah, just, just input your, your Bitcoin address there. Um, and the next thing you want to do is you want to trigger a payout. So you do want to get, yeah, question. Um, so, so what brains pool does is it's, it's basically a liability in their system until you hit the threshold because to pay out, like I'm mining like 20 cents per day, maybe. So to pay to a Bitcoin address every time, 20 cents, is just not worth it, especially with the fee market. So they, they, you set up an interval. So you gotta, you gotta rack up a bunch of money, maybe $10, hundred dollars before they can actually pay out. Because Brains Pool right now only supports paying out on-chain Bitcoin. They don't support Lightning yet. Hopefully, they'll support Lightning eventually. We're crossing our fingers. A couple of the pools support Lightning payouts. Um, but yeah, for now, you just got to yeah put an on-chain Bitcoin address in there. No, I mean, not, not going to. Yeah, they just, I, I'm sure some of them do it. But, uh, but yeah, it's just a normal Bitcoin transaction. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean you could you could rotate your like do you need to put in like like maybe it asks for your first name and your last name, but there's not any real like Yeah, I'm using a pro there's no KYC to brains. I'm using a Proton Mail account. So you can basically run a VPN on your home network thing that a, you can use a Proton Mail account so they can't trace you. And B, if you wanted to, you could rotate your, your Bitcoin address um, on here. So there's, there's options to be more private. And there's other pools that support probably more privacy. But, you know, you're pretty well protected if you use a VPN and Proton Mail and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can. That would be nice, uh, but but really, it's not. It's it's just a liability on their books until they do the payout. So so I set this up to pay out. I think monthly, um, the third day of the month. So I mean, you could essentially manually do it or, or program it. They might have a way to do it. I haven't looked into the advanced settings. Again, I'm just doing this as a hobby project. Um, See, so yeah, I just right now I, I just get paid out to this Bitcoin address. Hopefully, they support Lightning because that would make way more sense mining at home. I'm, I'm mining like. 500 satoshis a day which doesn't make sense for on chain but that makes sense for lightning right so i i i would i'd be surprised if they don't integrate lightning eventually and then at that point you could get paid out instantly that would actually make sense for brains pool because then they wouldn't have this liability on their books right if we, i think me and super were talking about this yesterday like why wouldn't they every time they mine a block they basically, it goes to Brains wallets. They distribute it to all of the people who were within that pool in real time during the block to all their Lightning addresses. So I mean, it makes sense that the pools are probably going to go to Lightning. I think it's just a matter of them integrating it. So, Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, there's calculators out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you just Google, I forget which website I looked at it years ago, but there's definitely calculators where you can calculate your break-even point, uh, you know, how much. Yeah, they might have it on brains. Yeah, for all I know. But yeah, there's also like another thing too is is some people will pay a premium for the non-KYC Bitcoin, right? So even if you're, maybe you live in California, you're paying 20 cents a kilowatt hour, you know, potentially you want the non-KYC Bitcoin, so you just pay that extra Um but yeah, here in Texas, it's a lot better because we have a free market ERCOT. So we have a lot of different pricing and yeah, I get dirt cheap energy because I live near a, you know, a, a power station. So, all right. So yeah, once you set all that up, the second thing you want to do is create the payout schedule. I already did that. Um, so the next thing you want to do is actually create a worker. And this isn't as important when you're at home mining. This is more important if you're running like a big mine. Pretty much a worker is just like a bucket. So maybe you have these hundred, there's 50 miners and one worker over here. You have 50 miners and another worker over where it's just a way to segregate your miners. But here, you know, we're just, we have one or two S9s. We're just going to create one worker. Um, so to do that, we go to mining workers, connect workers. So let's go to this configuration, miner workers and you can see i've got this worker called worker name i think that's the default and it says okay so this actually means we're connected um, to this local miner here i'm going to show you how we connect to that in a second um, but yeah if you were to create this from scratch you would just say new worker um, and this is where they give you the options of stratum v1 or stratum v2 um, i chose stratum v2 it's it's a newer protocol and I'm not super familiar with all the details, but it basically, as an individual miner, you have more control over the transaction selections in a block. Do you, do you know the whole, all the details, Super, about uh, Stratum V2? I don't know if you've looked into the the details. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so essentially Stratum V2 gives more power to the individual miner to select the transactions and it kind of prevents maybe a pool becomes corrupt and they start censoring transactions. Stratum V2 is kind of a mitigation to allow individuals to choose the transactions. Again, if a miner starts becoming corrupt and our pool becomes corrupt and starts censoring transactions, it's a free market. Just exit that pool, join a new pool. You know, there's new protocols coming out with like Fetty Mints and Fetty Pools that could potentially mitigate that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on just mining pools becoming more decentralized and giving the individual miner uh, more power. Uh, but anyways, if you select Stratum V2, they essentially give you this connection string here um, with this information and basically save that because we're going to need that later once we actually configure we, when we log into our miner and configure it. Uh, but yeah, just set it, just save your username and password. Uh, not a whole lot to that. Insights, insights.brains.com. Did I spell it right? There you go. Holy shit. They've got everything. Profibil there you go. Profitability calculator. Cool. What's it at right now? Do, do, do. Monthly profit, 250 bucks, monthly revenue, cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Parameters here. Month to happening. Wow, this is cool. All right. So where do I Yeah. We'll do we'll do this at the we'll do this at the end because we could we could dig into a rabbit hole here. We'll calculate everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, our electrical engineers here. Hey, Jim, we had an electrical engineering question earlier. So, okay, uh, Jim Bob. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so a standard wall plug, how many watts does that put out, like in volts and all that? What is all that information? And how many, what is that in like, so an S9. So 
So in layman's terms, this S9 shouldn't trip a normal, um, yeah, because it, it doesn't put out, 2200 watts is what a standard, yeah, yeah, thought it was. Yeah, it's, it is a space heater. Yeah. So the TLDR is this thing puts out 2200 watts and you can plug it into a normal plug. Watts. Okay. So if you if you blow your box, your your fuse just changed your fuse is what you're saying you can do. Okay. And that's something a normie a pleb could do, or you need an electrician for that? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, yeah, ask your electrical engineer friend to do it for you. you don't electrocute yourself. <laughs> All right. So what do we do next? We got our worker created. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we got our connection variables. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do is actually we're going to connect locally. And this is where the fun part happens. So the second you plug in this miner, it typically gets really loud and it'll like, it'll spin up and then it'll spin down. Um, and you need to make sure you have the ethernet cable plugged in as well. Um, so you're going to get an IP address on your network that you have to find. So there's two options to find that IP address. One is if you actually have access to your router, which I didn't have access to that. So the other, the other option is actually scan your entire network. Um, so I'll show you how to do that just because uh, I'm a nerd and I'm a programmer, so we like the terminal. Um, so basically on a Mac, you can do like IF config, um, and you can look at your, um... yeah, let's, uh, let's zoom that in. Um, so you basically on a Mac, you want to look for your uh, network card. Um, so I'm running here on this 192.168.4 address. Um, and you can see the broadcast address is .255. So this subnet of the network, there's 250-something IP addresses. Um, so let's scan that entire range and try to find our miner. Uh, so let's do that. So there's a tool called Nmap. I think you might have to install that. So if you're on a Mac, just do like brew install nmap. Um, but I'm actually going to scan that entire 192.168.1.1 range. Um, and I'm not getting the details of what the slash 24 is. It just is the, it's a subnetting thing, but it'll scan the, those 255 addresses. Um, and this will take a second because it's going to literally scan all your guys' computers that's connected. And it's going to get a ping back, and it's going to tell you what port you're connected on. Again, this is the hard way to do it. If you have access to your router, you should be able to just see a device and it'll be pretty obvious that it's a Bitcoin miner. Um, just try to log into it. Um, so for my particular case, I'm going to let that run in the background. Uh, but for my particular case, I'm a 192.168.1.243. So if I take that address, plug it in the browser window, there's actually this brains web interface that's exposed here. Um, and the default password is admin. So if you guys are on this network, don't connect to it and screw with my stuff because you, you, you can get to it. <laughs> you should probably change that password, but we're plebs. We just keep it admin. Um, okay, so that's how you connect to your individual miner. Um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is probably configure our power settings. Um, so let me get into my miner here. You can see I'm plugged into it locally. Um, and you can see it's actually mining right now. We've got all these statistics saying I'm mining at this many terahash a second, 10 terahash a second, which is pretty weak, but uh, you know this, this miner's half broken. Um, so to configure how much energy this thing is pulling, you go to miner configuration and you scroll down. Actually, before that, if you remember earlier, we pulled that, we saved that connection string. So the first thing you wanna do is connect to the pool. So this is going to connect this local machine running here out to Brains Pool. Um, so I, you can see I copied that connection string there. I copied the username and the password. And then you say add new pool and you're connected. Um, so how do you know you're connected? 
you can log back into brains and you can go to the worker and as long as that says okay you know your miner is configured and communicating with the pool so it's fairly simple fairly you know graphical on that it's connected um so the next configuration we want to do let's scroll down i'm going to skip all these advanced settings about asic boosts and stuff we're, we're just plebs here we just care about how much energy we're uh we're consuming um so if you go to this auto-tune setting and you enable it, this is how much you can limit your ASIC from using. So I set it to 860 watts, mainly because two of the hash boards on here are broken and that's all this one supports. Um, but that's a pretty good number to start with, around 800 watts. You can play with that, see how much you mine. And this, this 800 watts is getting me about five or 600 Satoshis a day, which right now is like, what, 15 or 20 cents? Um, so you can imagine if I was running this at full power at 2,200 watts, you know, what is that going to get me? 75 cents a day, maybe? At the current rates? 1,000 Satoshis, 1,200 Satoshis? This? No, dude, this is a $150 device. Yeah, so, oh, you missed the talk earlier. So if you go to Kaboom Racks, we just looked at the going rate. This is an old freaking S9, used, nice and beat up, half broken. This is probably even less than 125. I would assume $125 would buy you an operational S9. Yeah, these things are dirt cheap now. People are giving these away almost. If you want to buy an S19, I think those are going for a couple thousand, maybe 4,000 bucks. But even those are coming. Are those coming down in price too? Under 2,000 for an S19. Okay. Yeah. So if you got access to like a a garage or something with a, you know a, a 240, like a dryer plug. You could definitely go for that, but for 2000, I don't know, maybe, maybe just getting 10 S nines might even be cheaper. I don't know. Like play with it. Like, uh, we're just pleb mining here. So we're just going with the cheapest stuff we can find. So that's pretty much all I do for the configuration is configuring out how much uh, power this thing takes. All right. What do we do next? The dashboard. Yeah. Let's go a little bit over this dashboard here. Um, so let's go to minor. Let's go to overview. Nope. Um, so this is probably the most important thing to make sure you're actually live and active. First thing to check is that you're connected to the pool. Second thing to check is that you're not running too hot. You know, we're running pretty cold. It's, I think if you're running hot, that'll turn red or probably start yelling at you. Next thing you want to check is to make sure you're actually mining with how much power you want. So we're mining, like I configured it, 860 watts. Um, and the next thing you want to look at is how many terahash hash you're actually producing. This is how many um, hashes you're actually producing, which the higher the hash rate, the more odds you have for winning a block. Um, so we're running 11 terahash, hash, which is pretty sad compared to like these big, these big riot pools are at like exa hash or tera hash or some crazy amounts. But again, we're pleb mining, so we're doing it on the cheap. Um, yeah, and the next thing you can monitor, this thing's really cool. Brains OS is awesome because you can monitor that your fans are working. And you could potentially set up tail scale to remote into this machine. So if you're away from home and you're maybe afraid, like, oh, is my miner working? If the fans are, are blowing out, is it getting too hot? You can basically remotely check into this. You might even be able to remotely kill switch this. Is there a way to turn this off remotely? Yeah, you can reboot it and probably turn it off remotely if, like, if something's going wrong with it. So yeah, Brains Brains OS is super powerful. That's why they're like my favorite. And they've got a nice pool and everything just works nicely together. And they're really good to us in Austin. They sponsor a lot of the events here. They sponsor the Bitcoin Commons down the road. So shout out to Brains. They're they're good. They're good dudes. What else do we want to look at? All right, yeah. Uh you're probably interested in like the most important thing like getting paid. So how do we know we get paid? What does that look like? Um, so what you're gonna gonna want to do is log into your brains account at pools.pool.brain.com. And if you go up to this funds tab, we can actually go to that test account that we can created and we can see like the history of all of our payouts. Or actually, no, go to the history tab. That's better. And you can see this wallet right here. I've I've been mining for a couple days and I've I've mined previously, so I have eleven dollars. This I've I've mined in total with these random miners I've been doing. So it's, it's, it's an honest plebs day work. So, but anyways, if, it, yeah, you can, yeah, 
you can buy like one beer with that. Eleven bucks is about buys you a beer on Rainy Street, you know. And then you go out on the trail and you get killed by the Rainy Street Ripper. But that that's another story. <laughs> Some, anyways. Um, so yeah. So if we look at these blocks, pretty much on average, I've noticed over the past couple days, Brains Pool is mining about one block a day. Um, so if how many out here are familiar with mempool or mempool.space? Is everyone familiar with that? Are there any newbies out here? Okay, so so if you go to mempool.space, this pretty much gives you statistics on what is going on. So if we go to this hammer over here, it's going to give you all the statistics about mining. And let's look at all these different mining pools here. Um, so you can see the biggest mining pool is Foundry. Yeah, you want to zoom in? Um, so Foundry pool is a little different than other pools. It's kind of a invite-only pool. So as a pleb, we're not eligible to join Foundry pool because we're not part of the elite. We're, we're just loser plebs. The other big one is Ant pool and F2 pool. And then you can see all these other smaller pools. Um, so Brains pool has about 1.29% of the the network. They, they mine... 1% of the blocks, right, or whatever. So so they seem to be mining about one block a day, which is good for us. Like, we don't really care. I like Brains Pool. You could potentially join a different pool if you wanted to. Maybe your payout will be bigger. Maybe it won't. I'm not 100% sure. And there is a tool called Nice Hash, and I think it's a marketplace where they try to get you the best rate. But we're just pleb mining, so I just go with Brain Pool. They pay me out once once a day. That's That's good enough for me. Um, so again, to go back to that statistic, you can see on the 22nd here, a block was found. So that means Brains Pool found the block. And then at that point, I contributed 10 terahash a second. So they're going to give me a percentage of that payout. So you can see the block reward was 6.39 or 6.3 .3 Bitcoin. So every block that's mined, that's what the pool gets. They get six Bitcoin. Every halvening, that cuts in half. So the previous four years ago, it was, you know, twice that amount. So it was, you know, double that. In four more years, it's going to be half that three Bitcoin payout. out. In four more years, the halvening happens. Only one Bitcoin will get paid out. Eventually until 2140, where there's no more block reward, the entire... Um, Bitcoin is out in the wild, and then the fee market is the thing that will sustain Bitcoin mining. So if you do the math, you can imagine the fee market for Bitcoin is going to go way up. So I, I predict just we're not going to be able to pay pennies a transaction in the future. So so just be be aware of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's a good thing because in the future when you know, maybe it's thousand dollars for a transaction. You're not going to get garbage monkey, stupid fucking JPEGs on the blockchain on Bitcoin. You're only going to get the most important transaction in the world, which is your life savings, right? I think it's just going to be like lightning channels opening and your life savings. So yes, $11 right now, apparently <laughs> that's all I have. Um, and you can see my share of that was 25 cents or 909 Satoshis. Which it's an honest day's work, right? This this thing running for me, it was running for free. So that honestly, if I get paid twenty five cents of free Bitcoin per day for the next whatever amount of years, and the price of Bitcoin's going up right now, it's at what twenty eight thirty k. I don't even know what it's at. You can see this is like kind of a good way to make passive income if you have cheap enough energy rate, um, and even better yet, non KYC Bitcoin, right? So if you do it right with getting like a proton mail account using a VPN, you're pretty much for the most part anonymous. And there's there's guides on how to be more private and anonymous out there. I'm not gonna go into those details. This is just kind of a intro 101 to it. Um, and yeah, you can see a couple of days prior on the 19th of uh, of April, Brains Pool actually kind of got lucky. They mined two blocks that day. Um, so I don't think my miner was running the whole time because I got a payout of a thousand Satoshis, and then the next one was two. Maybe it was one of those weird blocks where they kind of mine partial blocks and then it comes real quick. Um, so this might actually be part of the same thing. But yeah, you can see I'm consistently getting money and this thing's running at one third power. So if you're running this at full power, you know, that reward could have been 75 cents a day. So 
yeah, if you have an S19, it could be $3 a day. So yeah, it just, and again, it comes back to, you know, what you value. Do you value non-KYC Bitcoin? Do you have cheap energy? Um, in Texas, pretty lucky. We get cheap energy and we value freedom and privacy. So it's, it's kind of. Yes. So a lot of these devices, if you buy them from Kaboom Racks, almost, they almost always have the firmware already baked on it. So I didn't even have to install it on here. There are guides. I, I think there's even a YouTube video that Brains put out on step-by-step -step how to install the firmware on there if it doesn't have it. I've never done it personally, but I'm sure it's it should be fairly easy to do. It's free. I think it's free. Uh, oh, I mean, the pool. Yeah, the pool is, is taking fees every time they mine a block. I have no clue. Yeah, I don't know. One and two percent. Yeah. And it's a free market competition. So they're competing against payouts of all these other pools. So I wouldn't suspect any pool would pay way more out than the other. The going rate's probably what one to two percent is what Super said. So and, and if they start screwing you over, just pull your miner out of that pool, do, join a different pool that'll pay you out better. And that's kind of the whole point of nice hash is is that marketplace. Let's let's pull that website up. Nice hash. I've never actually used this, but I know they do a lot of stuff with shit coins. But uh, I mean, I think this is popular with some people use it to try to get a better rate. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, it is cool. They they offer lightning payouts. So oh, okay, fuck them. All right, I I don't recommend nice hash, but if you're if you're more about the money than the privacy, it might be an option. But uh, for me personally. Fuck that. All right. Dude, I've never done that. I'm a pleb. I mean, you would you would just... Um... Yeah, so if you joined another mining pool, I've never done it with Brains OS, but I would assume it would be... They follow the Stratum protocol, right? So that's hence the Stratum TCP... Yeah, so you'd have to Google it, Super. If you wanted to join another pool, Google it. <laughs> we can we can ask ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do that, but I'm sure it's uh, you could do it something like that. Yeah. Break. Yeah. Blow the fuse. Yeah. Yeah. And I typically clock them down just because I, I don't want the noise. Right. I'm, I'm just, I have it in my office, like right next to my computer. So, so that's one of the, and they're, they're 125 bucks. So they're pretty cheap. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. If you burn your house down, it's not my fault. <laughs> All right, super. What are we calling them? What? Says who? Okay, so AKA Secret Sats. Cool. I like it. I mean, there might be, I would assume there's a VPN setting. I've never looked into how you would set your, your device to use a VPN. You might have to do it at the router level. I don't know. Is there like a VPN thing? Yeah. I would just Google like how to use a VPN. You could probably use Tor too. Um, Well, if you're using a VIP, if you're using a VPN, your ISP only knows you're connecting to a VPN. They don't know that the VPN is then connecting to Brains Pool. 
So your ISP just knows. Yeah, yeah, your ISP. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's. No, all they can see is that you're connecting to a VPN. They don't know what you're doing afterwards. Yeah. And you could you could easy you could even use Tor and then connect to a VPN over Tor and then connect to it. You you could chain it if you wanted to if you're really if you're really paranoid. But that was always my thing. Like you could potentially use juris, jurisdictional arbitrage. So you could connect to let's say a VPN that's um, friendly to the West, right? And then on that VPN connect to another VPN that isn't friendly to the West, like Russia. So then if Russia's like, hey America, give me this these information about this VPN user, you know, America would be like, give them the finger, right? Same vice versa. If you're an American VPN and they're like, Hey, Russia, we need information about this VPN user. They could just give you the finger. So you can basically, you can chain these VPNs together to use like jurisdictional arbitrage to like avoid anything or just use Tor or there's I, I2P is one that's Coming kind of more popular, um, so there's there's a lot of options. Um, it just depends on how deep you want to go into it, and I I haven't set up a lot of that stuff. I but uh, yeah, there's definitely articles out there. I think there's privacy blogs out there for Bitcoiners. I don't know who the popular one is. Who, who's the popular privacy app? I, Odell has a lot of shit out there. He's he's pretty big into all that, so I'm sure he's got something out there. Yeah, Bitcoin Privacy Newsletter is another good resource. Uh, Super said. Uh, what else did I have? I don't know if I had anything else. That might be everything. Uh, da, da, da. So, so another thing is when you're connecting at home. So what I originally did, I originally was kind of testing out mining when I lived in an apartment. And I didn't have, like, now I have more space because I'm in a house. Uh, but you can actually buy one of these like venting things where you could like essentially hook that into the fan and then vent out of your dryer if you wanted to. You probably shouldn't run it at full blast because it might be too hot, but if you're running at like, I was running at 800 watts, like that's a potential way to not heat your apartment up super high. You can, this month in Bitcoin privacy is the newsletter you want to subscribe to. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of options to vent these things. Even right now, if you have a big enough space, like you guys aren't feeling heated right now. Like this heat pretty much ends right there. So yeah, just play around with your power settings, play around. They make all these different connectors. Um, you know, if you have a garage, that's probably even better because, you know, that's it's outside and it's you can be as loud as you want out there. And, yeah. Any Any last questions, final questions, comments? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if ERCOT lists prices. I mean, in Texas, we have like a free energy market. So I think you, you would probably just search online for the cheapest energy. The Houston Bitcoin meetup is probably the, it's like a specific mining meetup in Houston. They do every month. It's really big, like 300 people show up. Those are all like energy oil gas guys. So they would probably know better than me, even Parker Lewis, he's big in the energy industry. So I'd maybe reach out to him to see where, where the cheap energy is. But, uh, yeah, again, this is just like pleb mining at home. So I'm just, I was just trying, wanted to demonstrate how you could just do it as just a normal person at home and. Yeah, if you if you live next to like the Tesla Gigafactory, they got cheap energy out there. So so maybe move out east. East Austin has cheap energy. So yeah, yeah. That doesn't work anymore. They are probably mining shit coins like Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. GPU miners, you can't. Yeah, you can't mine anymore. Like maybe way back in like 2010 or 11. But yeah, we've been on ASICs for how long? Yeah, like yeah, ASIC is the only option. It's you would never win. Like it's just yeah, it's super inefficient. Yeah, it's not meant for the SHA-256 hash. This is a, a specifically made circuit. What does it stand for? Electrical engineer guy, application specific integrated circuitry. circuitry. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. What? 
I mean, I guess you could mine on anything that can do... Like, my laptop can understand SHA-256 hashes, so I could mine on it. I'm never going to win. I'm just going to lose energy. Like, it's... Yeah, if you're doing it, you're, you're, uh, you're wasting your time. Yeah, you can do it on pen and paper. There was... There was actually a, a Bitcoin meetup in uh, in LA. The the Bit Devs at the beginning of it, they gave everyone a piece of paper where you where you were trying to guess a nonce, right? So you, you'd put this little what is it like a couple character hash, like with yeah. So so yeah, you could try to guess it on pencil and paper. You'll never get you're never gonna guess it, but it's it's kind of a fun fun game. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Oh, stack a new shirt. Yeah, we got merch. If you guys want any local Austin merch, we've got stack a new shirts over there. We've got Pleb Lab shirts. We got stickers. We got all that good stuff. Um, I guess one last announcement. Um, so every Saturday, typically after these um, these things, we go to Lady Bird Lake. I don't know. Do we have? Oh, you didn't make one. Okay, I won't post it. But yeah, we go to we go to Lady Bird Lake and we just hang out on the lake. There's usually like between two and five hundred people just floating out in the sun, and yeah, we just get some sun. We've got between two hundred and five hundred people, I'd say. Yeah, two. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, everybody's welcome to go. We typically go to Lunef Point around two thirty and just kind of drink beers and get the sun. So. That's just you and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's has been a couple of times where it was two people. So yeah. <laughs> Next Saturday, we might not have it because of the conference, unless somebody wants to host Brotilla and I can give them the umbrella. But uh, yeah, it's called Brotilla. Google it. If you literally go to Google, type in the word Brotilla, there's a Reddit article about Austin, Texas, specifically Lunef Point, where all the paddle boarders gather. And it's, it's interesting because you don't have to have a paddle board. You can wait out there. It's only about you know chest high at the deepest. So... Yeah, I don't know when the next one will be, but yeah, we, we typically, we typically just do them after these workshops. Um, but yeah, that's it. Any, any last questions? All right. Yeah. Feel free. If you guys want to come up and touch the ASIC and play with it and we can unplug it and plug it back in, you can sound how it, how it, it does, but uh, yeah, cool. Thanks everyone.